after fighting Dracula as his ancestors, it's time to once again step into the shoes of Simon Belmont in this Super Nintendo remake of the original game. Super Castlevania 4 is nothing short of a masterpiece. This time, the game takes inspiration from Castlevania 3, having Simon go through a long trek before reaching Dracula's castle. It feels so good to play as Simon again, especially now in 16-bit glory, but this time, things are a little different. It seems like Simon has been practicing with his whip skills, because this time around, he can whip in any direction. In addition to this, he's able to swing from it while hanging off of hooks. He can even do this weird thing where he just flails it around. It doesn't do much damage, but it's really funny. <laughs> this mechanic is so useful and so much fun that it's a surprise they never brought this back in a future game. It's so fun, so satisfying, and so expertly mixed into the gameplay that it makes Super Castlevania 4 my second favorite Castlevania game and my favorite out of all the classic Vanyas. However, this being said, it's ironically not one of my favorite soundtracks. Yeah, I know I always praise the music in Castlevania, but this game went for a more atmospheric approach with some of its tunes, while others had the tried and true Castlevania sound. Take a listen to these atmospheric songs. Now compare that to the ones that actually sound like Castlevania. Okay, I kind of cheated since the last three were from previous games, but the point still stands. It almost feels like two different composers worked on the soundtrack. Once you make it through three hardest levels in the game, it's time to take on Dracula's closest assistants. First up is Slagra, who could easily be Ridley's second cousin. He's a challenging fight, and his long range will easily fuck you up. Next up is Gaibon, who isn't too bad until he turns red with rage and the battle intensifies. Finally, it's time to battle Dracula's most loyal servant. His second command, the one and only, Death. He's as difficult as ever, and has a few tricks up his sleeve. After his defeat, it's time for the final showdown with Dracula. The fight is the same as always, he teleports around the room shooting fire at you and you have to hit his head. The second phase, however, this time he doesn't transform. Filled with anger and hate towards the Belmont, Dracula unleashes all he's got in easily the hardest battle in the game, and the epicness is cranked up to 11 when Simon's theme starts playing. Once Dracula is defeated, the sunlight destroys him and the castle crumbles with Simon standing victorious. Super Castlevania 4 is just that. Super. It's a fantastic game from start to finish, and is the game I would highly recommend starting with. It's difficult, but not as difficult as some of the other games. It's smooth, fun, and a decent challenge, and the sheer aesthetic of this game is so fun to look at. There's so many neat little background details that you may miss the first time around. I love this game, and you should too. If you have a Super Nintendo, a Super Nintendo Classic, or even a Wii U, I highly recommend checking this one out. And now that we're done with Simon for a while, it's time to take a look at the games that his Smash Bros. Echo Fighter stars in. Come back tomorrow and we take a look at Richter Belmont in Rondo of Blood and Dracula X. See you then. <laughs>